favorite real estate people in the world. Look, he's not my managing broker because he is, but he is definitely my broker owner, right? My boss, <laughs> none other than the Nick Liebert. What's going on today, Nick? Oh, man. Well, first of all, that how does that work if I'm your boss and then, but you are my mentor? That's a messed up um, if you guys don't already know, I mean, I just, Marky has been my mentor and uh, my social media coach for so many years before we were even at Exit together. I was so, um, I, I always say this, every time I listen to Marky and actually implement what she tells me, I make money. I make more money when I listen to Marky. And so I used to hire her to come into Exit after I opened to get the knowledge that I was receiving for the rest of my agents. And finally, we just eventually started to work together. But by the way, I'm not your boss. I'm not anybody's boss over there except the W-2 staff because we're all 1099s. We're independent contractors as real estate agents. So we that are. is the beauty of it. You and I are our own bosses. That's the, We're the CEO of Me, Inc., all of it. And, and you, were, you were one of the first people to really make me realize that because you know we both have been at multiple companies. And the bottom line is, Nick and Marky win when we do what we know we need to do, regardless of whether the company above, below, or around us is doing anything. Now, that's 100% the truth. And one of the things that I know that we're here today uh, that we're going to talk about definitely is business planning. And when I started thinking about business planning, when I was sitting in the bed the other day, I realized that so many people pay attention to this annual business plan. And it's not an annual action. It's an ongoing action. So we have to come back and we have to look at these plans every single month to make sure that we're on track. And one thing that we know about you, Nick, and I'm going to just pull this up, a post that you did on January the 15th. And not only do we have 300 agents, you closed $21.7 million in production. You saw a 15.7% growth uh, in units and then a 29.8% growth in volume. So not only are you managing uh, essentially an office with 300 agents, your productivity continues to grow. And I know that from a business standing, marketing, bringing in systems, that is something that you've done a fabulous job at doing, plus being just, you know, a dynamo. When we think about how to grow our businesses in, 20, in, in this year, right? Mm -hmm. What's the very first step that one should take? So a couple of different things. You know, I am, so I've been doing this 23 years and I've been a student of the business the whole time <clears throat> because I found that real quickly, I started at a big company that at that point was number one in real estate brokerage and residential brokerage everywhere. And I, and a lot of the agents were like, Oh, you just kind of wait for the phone to ring because you're at the big company and people are just going to automatically want to work with you. And that never happened. So I always knew I had to go out and generate my own business and create systems. So what I'm looking for, for 2022 is to really put the touch back on the consumer is I think that the consumer has kind of gotten lost in the shuffle the last two years uh, because we were in the pandemic, everything shut down. Then, you know, the showings were virtual. I go out and I walk into an open house from a stranger. Maybe sometimes it's even an exit agent that's not in coaching with me yet. And I'm like, this, these open houses are a mess. So I went and did my own open house yesterday. We got a lot of uh, offers and activity. It was a great open house. I did a new type of drone video. It's on my Instagram and YouTube. It's all over my stuff because I didn't like what was out there for the consumer. So what I'm looking for with my business planning is how can I not just do the same thing everybody else is, but how can I solve a problem that's there? For example, Matterport tours, very good tours. They were wonderful. 3D tours are great. During the pandemic, they help people buy. But what I noticed the issues with some of, the, of, of the, that idea was, I can't sit there and go, Marky, go to the one minute 37 mark when the camera's turning this way. I can't reproduce as if I was actually in the property, turning corners, going up and down the staircase, um, walking around a dining room chandelier, like I do in real life. And so my clients and I were always struggling with that. Well, we figured out 
with an outside vendor how to fly a drone inside a house the same way you do outside a house. So you've got these 360 indoor tours for people. So as far as what I'm looking for for 2022, it's all about the consumer. You know, you you know that we changed um, CRMs this year. Uh, at, actually, at the end of last year, is a seven times uh, the cost of the old CRM for me as the broker owner. But I was sitting there going, this thing will give us more ways to educate, entertain, alert, and inform our consumers than ever before. Landing pages, text message codes, all this stuff. We got to have this now because our consumers are overwhelmed with the emails from everybody. They are underwhelmed with the inventory, which is why I partnered with Zenlist for all of the agents. Uh, so the, the costs of running a brokerage are up if you're doing it right, because the consumer, I feel from talking to my little focus groups, I call them, uh, people past clients, they're like, you know, this I didn't like about the transaction. This I did like. So this year it is all back, going back to the consumer. So one thing I definitely love is the fact, the ability to be able to listen, right? Um, because so many people think that real estate is 100% about them. Uh, they do not take the consumer into consideration. One thing that we think about all the time is it's not about us. It's 100% about the consumer. So I'm loving the fact that we updated our customer relationship management system. And if you went to a person's web page, the average web page generally has 57 different elements on that home page. So consumers have no idea what to do. But with the different landing pages, you're talking one on one with that person. Landing pages is the lead gen, right? And we need to generate leads. Uh, I'm doing an eight by eight program. I'm in you have programs. But how can we touch eight people by 8 a.m.? simply with our mobile device because we're listening to their Ford. What what have they said recently about their family, their occupation, their recreation, and their dreams? Because we definitely want to make sure that we are listening to people and the whole consumer centric. It's not about us. It's always going to be about that customer. And Donna Berry has come over here to tell us, hey, what's going on, Donna? She's watching us over there on YouTube. And so I talk oftentimes about the eight by eight. And one of the strategies we have is that you should add 2,880 contacts to your customer relationship management system. What's one of your systems and strategies that you're implementing for agents right now? So I actually, I'm looking up behind me here. I can't flip my camera too much to show you this. It is a, I've got a full whiteboard built into my wall. Uh, Marky, you know, Brock the, that I work with on my interior design ideas. He's like, you're so crazy with all these whiteboards. We're going to put them in one wall. And so I have kind of, I don't want to say the opposite of the, the 2880, because I have your 2880 over here circled in a corner, but I've got my relationship orbits, which is okay. If it's 2880, this is going to be a lot of work. But whatever that number is, I want you to go deep. I don't want you to just put them in there. I don't want you to just feed them content. I want you to build a relationship. I want to know their birthday. I want to know where they're from. I want to know what they do. I want to know that job change. I want to know that eight by eight uh, philosophy, which, you know, that's that both you and Annette Anthony have really beat that into me that that morning hours. I'm so big into the miracle morning with the workouts and the affirmation. That's also when you can get that five minutes to be on social media just to listen and realize somebody's hurting somebody's helping somebody's doing something that needs to be recognized um i have a friend with a new puppy i sat there and like boy i really wish i could go to petco drive 10 minutes to petco get that little gift card drop that off at his house i'm like there's got to be an app for that well an hour and a blog later we have a Money Mondays training next week for our agents about how to automate some of the gifting once you see the, but you can't automate everything. Right. Uh, you can automate getting to know people in terms of the first initial contact to a, putting them into the CRM, but then you still have to be you. And so my system is really more, I'm looking up at the wall, grouping people into more intimate categories than ever before and getting more intimate pieces of information than ever before so that you know if there's a street festival near their home then you can tell them hey you know what midsummer fest is coming up or it's canceled or it's moved or there's a new restaurant by you that i'd like you to try 
send them a video. That was one of the big things with Wise Agent for me is you can send video up to 250 people plus at a time. What if you sat there in the neighborhood that you were in? It's a great new coffee shop. They're offering a special and you were able to shoot it to everybody in your database that lives around there. If your database is a mess and it's not grouped right and you haven't taken the time to build these relationships with people so you'd at least know where they live or what food they like, you can't do that. And I learned the hard way um, along with a couple of our top agents that the bigger the database, it is a numbers game. But if it's so wide and so shallow, you know, nothing can grow there. Think of it like it's like soil. It's if it, everything is so wide and so shallow, you know, nothing can really grow unless the soil's aerated deep. And <laughs> that's really more where I'm going this year is I've made it wide. I need to go deeper. And so for a lot of our newer agents, they haven't gone wide enough yet and they've got to go deeper. So that's why I want to make it as easy as possible for them. And then also make sure that we keep everything in front of the consumer that is helpful, whether it's a tax appeal seminar, how to navigate the home warranty process, all the different content that we're putting out, the events we're putting on and everything is free. I can't stand that some of these competitors are spending your, or charging you know, four ninety five for the pleasure of doing business with their company to hold the paperwork that the state makes us hold anyway. Everything at Exit Strategy is always going to be free, both for the agents and the consumers. We are commission driven, but we're community driven in terms of the way we're trying to put value out there with our events and our content. And Marky, the content, all of the ideas of repurposing and everything like that. There's no way we could have some of the content coming out without your coaching. We are so grateful for you. Well, thank you very much. When you said go deep, right? <clears throat> Here's what I'm thinking about. So going back to that eight by eight, I just went over and you saw that I was looking at my phone. You can go right over right now to Facebook and you can look at who's going to have a birthday. Not in the month. Well, January is coming to an end, but think about February or even push it out to March, right? So that you can then send them a card. So here's a card from a young lady. Hey, Barbara Betts right? Barbara Betts actually sent me my first 50th birthday card for my 50th birthday, and it told me to have a happy birthday month. But now I'm on her list, right? And this was the card that she sent at the end of 2020, right? Things you'll never forget. Toilet paper shortages, six feet apart, staycation, home cooking, plenty of wine, right? And she mailed this out with a little note at the bottom. That means that one, she knows my birthday. Two, she knows my mailing address. Three, I keep her cards, right? Because I buy a Christian planner every year and I put all of my cards in here uh, because if you're ever feeling down, you can come back and you can reflect on this. But when we think about a person's for the family, the occupation, the recreation and the dreams, not only do we want to do we want to reach out in some form of fashion, and I'm not talking about right on their feed, right? I'm talking about you sending them an audio message, a video message, you sending them a, a handwritten note or a card the same way that Barbara Betts did me. But you must also update that customer relationship management system. You have to. And if we were to reach out to eight people every single day with something that is important to them, to me, there's no way you wouldn't get that business. Uh, Skylar, my son, right? Um, he has what i think he has uh two pendings right now he closed the deal last week and we got another property coming to the market four listings in 60 days as a all, yeah right but here's what's funny about him these are my four friends let me tell you how long these relationships are one of them i pledged so she was my neophyte i pledged her back in i think it was 92. One of them I graduated from eight, uh, not eighth grade, but high school with 1988. Another one attended high school with me, but he graduated in 1987. And when they thought about their real estate transactions, not for themselves, but for their elderly loved ones, they came to me because we're consistently putting information out. Now, here's what's funny. I told someone, I said, and I haven't sent any of them a, a card, right? So imagine had I been strategic and I'm reaching out to the people because because what I know about these four people, right? I knew them. I've known them all more than 30 years. 
okay? So imagine if I just went back to high school and grammar school, because you talked about an orbit, Nick, right? I, I haven't heard that term in orbit, right? And I go back to my high school orbit, and I go back to my grammar school orbit, where we all have parents and my grandparents' siblings are still living, right? That we're reaching out. Can we help you or a loved one? Because if I tell people this all the time, the likelihood is if your children are successful, they don't want your house. They're generally <laughs> the ones I'm just, if we want it, we're going to sell it to buy what we want, right? Yeah. It's not like we plan to go back to mom's house unless she got like a, a lakefront home, you know, and, and we look at one of your favorite destinations, right? They go to Miller Beach or something of that nature, right? We don't want their house, okay? Yeah. That means that they need someone to help them sell it. Well, if you're going on Facebook, we've seen auntie, grandma uh, in the hospital, them taking her driving, like driving Miss Daisy because they'll do a nice little video with her. Those are the people that we need to take that information, put it into that customer relationship management system and reach out to the 2,880 people. Because if I was to go back to, let's say my graduating class of 100 people, 114, I think it was, if I reached out to them strategically in any form of fashion, I, I could, I know that I could get a transaction every single month. Exactly. And it's, you know, it's something as simple as when you were talking about the personal notes, I literally just right here at my desk drawer opened up. There they are right here. I try to be, you know, practice what you preach, sending little notes out. These are just dollar tree or dollar store blank, you know, on the inside. Yay. It can be yay. Anything. Obviously if somebody's that passed away or something, don't send the yay one, but um, just overall building relationships and keeping them. That has been something that I didn't realize getting into this business 23 years ago while I was in college, I, you know, had no intention of doing this forever. I just wanted the license to uh, buy and sell real estate for myself. How many of you guys that are listening that thought you wouldn't do this forever? Now, here we are 10, 20, 30 years later. Um, I thought I'd be good at marketing because that's what I enjoy doing. And it ended up that I really was better with relationships and later on kind of had to relearn marketing, not from what I learned in school, but what I learned in the real world of what the consumer wants and needs in their marketing, but the relationships, not the marketing is what driven me. And that you mentioned family occupation, recreation, dreams, of course, that's a um, core training, core coaching philosophy. What I realized was I was spending thousands of dollars, almost $10,000 a month on billboards, bus benches, Zillow, Redfin to talk to strangers and have strangers look at my face, my orange, you know, tangerine face over here. And people didn't, nobody wanted to see that. Nobody cared. What was the, there was no message on my billboard or bus bench or magazine ad the same way. None of the ones I see now, you know, that are, that are appealing to the consumer, especially when it's your giant face. That's an ego thing for the agent. And in the meantime, your core people probably could have used a free lunch, a training, a hug, a personal note uh, in your database. And that's why when I study with our agents and I coach them and I see a, a experienced agent still working only with buyers, that tells me that they're not building, they're not keeping relationships with their past clients. It's transactional, it's churn and burn. And, and I've really tried to build better relationships, create systems around me. Um, and quite frankly, sometimes just make the time for people uh, because it is a relationship business, not a transaction business, where now you don't see billboards, bus benches, anything like that from me. My my costs are half of what they were. And Mark, you mentioned my 2020 into my 2021 numbers. The year before that, my business was up 40% and 50% respectively in volume and units. So it's I'm sitting here going, wow, look, this is a really great curve we got going on here because I'm spending less, making more, and the joy is back in my business because the joy was gone for a while. You know, you talk to nothing but strangers all day, cold call all day. And that is a, it's the way you start in the business. If you don't know anybody, you know, Skylar's young. Um, when I started, I was 20. None of my friends were buying. They were, you know, passing out in the alleys between the, uh, the fraternity and sorority events. The ones that were even in, in school, they weren't that, that wasn't the mindset then. And so now, I remember that. And so we've got some very young agents, some very, you know, green agents, so to speak, at exit and everywhere that are going, you know, my friends aren't buying. I'm like, then, then you got a cold call. You do have to do the expires, the, the FISBOs, the tough stuff, but know that those days will fade 
if you start to build real relationships, even with the expireds and FISBOs. One of my first clients here was an expired because uh, I did my business in Indiana, became a top producer, came over to the city and had to start all over again with a whole new, you know, not knowing anybody, uh, a whole new world, so to speak. And one of my first clients was an expired. They still send me business. And so that wasn't a natural friend. That was someone that became a friend over the years because they saw me trying to keep that relationship going even if we didn't have the most things in common in the real world. Wow. Now, one thing, because you shared your plan with me. So let's go back. We were both KW agents. I was at home holding my own license. I would come in and do, you know, a couple of trainings for your agents. And one day you shared your business plan and your marketing plan with me. And I said, he practices his plan, right? That's the first thing I said. I said, he practices this plan. So it made me prepare, right? So here's numerous pages. This is my plan for this year. And a lot of times we come up with this great plan. One, we don't go back and look at the plan. So business planning is not an annual one hit wonder, okay? It's something that you should sit down with. So yesterday I sat down because I met my January goals, but now I'm looking at what can I do a little different for the month of February? What additional resources do I need in order to support that, even though that I think that I plan? So just last night, preparing for our call, right, I came in and had to do my little notebook of all the other things that I need in order to support this plan to make sure that we hit our February numbers. I'm not in the middle of February, right? I'm looking at this before February hits because you want to have a written plan. All this, what you think in your mind, don't mean nothing. Uh, you're 42, you're going to be 42% more successful simply by writing it down. So I write it in my notebook and then I come back and vet it and then I type it, right? And print it out. So that means that two different times I'm interacting with what I want those goals to be. But all of this requires research, understanding who your target market is. So I often use you, Nick, because you know, we're almost like different as night and day, right? I'm on the south side of Chicago. I'm married with two kids, right? You on the north side of the Chicago, like, however, no we kids. carry no kids, We, but we have the same business philosophies, right? Which leads to our success and the success of people around us. Because regardless to whether you're on the south side of Chicago or the north side of Chicago, if people are implementing these business strategies, I don't care if they're in Chicago, they can still have great success. And one thing that people signify a lot about, you know, um, uh, greatest self promoters of all times, I'm not offended by that. That means I'm doing my job in a sales and marketing position. It is my responsibility to always let you know what it is that I do for a living because closed mouths don't get fed. I tell people all that all the time. I'm never going to be mad at anyone for no one can ever say that they uh didn't know what it was that i do amen and if and if they do that's on you you know mm -hmm. that is the if people I, I i say the same thing mark you and i have so much in common for not having a lot in common on the surface the way we operate i have such a respect for the way you operate because i've never heard you talk down to someone I've only heard you try to help people and coach people, educate people by you doing the research. You know, it's like I sat there. I just have to sit in your classes and listen and pick what I can actually implement to get it. And that's what I've tried to emulate from you. But as far as self-promotion, there are agents out there that are just, you know, they're secret agents. And that is why they are sometimes not so secretly broke. Um, it may be annoying to a few, but I think that the way that most of us have learned to adapt is you know, you can't, no one wants to follow on social media, someone that is trying to sell them something. They're going to try to, they're going to follow and build relationships with people they find interesting that happen to also operate at a high level, selling something or coaching on something, whatever that situation is. And to me, it is on me to make sure my brand, which is you, is out there. And when I find that someone has not purchased with me, a lot of times the way it happens is some they come to me because they know that I'm going to know eventually or that they know what I do and that they I am one of their probably should be one of their choices. And they say, Nick, you know, I want to let you know I'm going to buy a place and not with you. 
And here's why. That is the best news I hear all day because I know that I did my job to the point that these people know to come to me to tell me even when they're not going to buy with me, but that over 70% of my business comes from social media, comes from referrals through social media channels. Very rarely does it come through text even anymore and, and extremely rarely email. People text me, but most of the time it's a DM, it's a link up, something like that on Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera, because they see me out there doing the business. I'm not sitting there hiding at home on Sunday, eating, you know, eating some chocolates on the couch and posting stories. I'm actually out there in the field doing the open houses, showing the 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 stuff that to the clients that they need to get into, figure out what tools our agents need. And the and my friends even that want me to work a little less, they know they're like, that's how he gets his ideas is he's out in the field. I can't read a book and figure out what the agents need or the consumers need. I need to be out there with you guys. And so that's been fun to watch, you know, what our agents are doing now to come and tip me off to, Hey, you know what? I liked this idea. I didn't like that idea because the consumer, I think they realize, like I said, at the beginning of this, the last two years, even though the interest rates were low, they kind of came in last because they had the, the minimum amount of inventory. The agents all freaked out at the beginning and cut expenses. So they had less technology actually than ever before, less staff than ever before. The consumers, and a lot of times, the agents never you know rehired staff. So they were very overbooked. And I feel like the not only did you get you got a little only a little bit of inventory to look at, you also had an agent that wasn't always a hundred percent present and there for you the way they should have been. So that's why I want to make this the push to make it back into the year of the consumer, because I just, I didn't like the way even some of my own transactions went the last two years until the end of them. And that's, that's not just the way, that's not the way I roll. So that's why I want to make it a big year for the consumer. Excellent. I, when I think about the consumer, there's a couple of tools that come to mind, right? Going over to google.com forward slash trans to see how people are searching and then taking that information over to answerthepublic.com where you will see exactly all the different ways that consumers are searching the internet because we want to solve their problems and we want to solve their problems with video. So earlier today, look, Nick, earlier today, and we was on, we was on pretty early, but earlier today, I had a call with on video from the video marketing school. And we talked about coming up with video, a video strategy, a YouTube first video strategy where you do seven things. Okay. So you would do a seven minute video given seven resources, but then you take that seven minute video and you break it down into seven 60 second videos or however long it takes you to talk about that one thing, because now you have a week's worth of content, but you led with YouTube. The reason for leading with YouTube is the fact that YouTube is the number two, it's, it's number two in two categories, number two, social network, number two, social, uh, actually search engine. Also as real estate professionals, we can monetize it. And so consumers are definitely searching or telling the internet it's problems. They, they want solutions for their problems. Yeah. The question is as a real estate professional, are you going to be that solution for them? So we can figure out how they're talking and we can create content to solve their problems on the platforms that we know that they're hanging out with. And then when they start to talk about their problems, right? Because we come back and we're implementing an eight by eight strategy and we're implementing that morning routine. We update the customer relationship management system where we're putting the address, the birthday, the children's graduation, the new promotion, the promotion that if we did any research, we know they make, you know, 30 to $40,000 more money. And we put them in that studio condo a couple of years ago that now we could talk to them about, hey, do you know how much it appreciated? First of all, so I want to give you an updated CMA of your home, right? Or, or what is the equity position? And because you can afford, right? another twelve hundred dollars uh whatever a month here's what you could do with that money it's all about listening though and we could take all those strategies and implement it into a consumer centric strategy now i know that on monday nights or this monday night you're doing something <laughs> unique 
you saw me. I was literally sitting there. I'm like, all right, I want to get that text code for her, make sure that I have the right one because I knew that was coming. <laughs> That's, we, you and I have worked together a while, and I'm like, I think that she's going to ask for that code soon. Um, I am. So what we want to do is it, what one of the things that when I think of business planning, I want to get everything, like Marky said, on paper. And I also want to make it so that I can put this piece of paper somewhere else come out every week like she's got it also give it to a friend i almost interrupted you earlier i'm like don't do it nick don't interrupt her um that's rude but i knew i'd almost forget it and i nearly did give it to somebody else if you are on here i'm looking at some of the great um you know different states people are in if you've got a peer partner use a peer partner i have literally put things on my instagram stories to make sure that someone knew i said that makes it sound like not only do I live alone, but I never leave the house, but that someone knew I said that I was going to do something because it created accountability. A plan a plan without a written plan is a plan to fail, but a plan without some sort of accountability, whether it's to yourself or to somebody else, is very dangerous too, because then it's like, well, I put that plan together and nothing happened. And it almost sets you up to not want to even do the plan next year. Put it out somewhere. I've got mine here. I've got it in my binder. Um, I've got it at the at the uh, everywhere around me, and I've also given it to two of my closest friends that we kind of talk business a lot, and that has been a big game changer for me. Tonight, Monday night, I'm going to go into some of what my business plan is. But the funny thing is, we're not going to ever really touch that template. That template's on my YouTube channel. What we're going to do tonight is say, okay, I said I was going to do X, Y, Z in that business plan. Here is the landing pages I've created for each one of these in one concise location. So quite frankly, I know what my mission is. My mission is to get one of these buttons out to somebody today in a personal manner, not just blast it out on social, but to actually say, okay, you told me you wanted to buy this year. Here's my buyer's guide, my digital buyer's guide if you're an exit. What days and times work for you this week to actually get together and do something. I did that exact same script with someone last week, got him pre approved. That was Thursday. Thursday night did the Zoom. Friday did the pre approval with the, uh, one of my preferred lenders. Saturday drove around in my car. Monday, here we are for round two of showings. And they said, you know what? I think I want to wrap this up by the end of the week. So if I had not had that conversation, I know that for a fact they know two other realtors. And so that might've been one of those times where you just, you need to go back to the business plan and say, I said I was gonna give out a business, a buyer side presentation a week, a seller side presentation a week. If you're not tracking what you're doing, which goes back to right up where that tracker is, Mark, he's got in the screen. It's a little different than mine. They're probably the exact same philosophy. Um, if you're not tracking what you're doing and being honest with yourself, and guys, sometimes that is just sitting there in your Google calendar and time blocking two hours a day. Marky, can I share my screen for a second? Yes, you can. Because I'd like to disable that camera. I'm so greasy today. I don't know what's going on. No, no, um, no. You look well, nice and tan. Yeah. <laughs> so let me get out of that screen. Can you, does this work? That does work. It's looking good. Go right ahead. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and open up my calendar. And I want to show you how I set things up. That is not to say that it is perfect by any means. Now, Mark, you mentioned eight by eight, um, seven by seven, 10 by 10. I don't care where you are in that timeline, my friends, but I have every morning, I have a different themed day, which if you're an exit strategy, you know, I talk about the theme days every week. I have people's birthdays right up here at the top. Your phone is a sponge for these relationship orbits. First name, last name, email address, phone number, connect with them on LinkedIn and then on LinkedIn, most of the time, either LinkedIn or Facebook will have their birthday. So what is that guy? What do I have to do today? I already wish Charlie Brown. Yes, that is his real name. It's a friend of mine in Boston, a financial planner. Wished him a happy birthday yesterday. Reagan is going to get a little video and a little card from me because Reagan is a longtime past client. Michael's a VIP. He's going to get something as well. And then you look down here, I've got the lead generation time blocked off. Now, full disclosure, what did I do today? I disrespected that. And I'm about to blow through my 11 a.m. meeting, but I already led in something with Marky. What I really feel like if you need to 
say, here's who I talk to and I can't open up a separate form because it is just too much for me. This is the first time I've ever said this, but I did this myself last week. I literally would put down little quick things in here and I'd say, okay, I actually did talk to X, Y, Z person. Now, doesn't that mean that I probably just haven't set up my CRM all the way yet? Exactly. But I wanted to get with one of our agents that was having an issue with, I don't want to use the greatness tracker, yet another thing. If you're using a good CRM, the CRM will tell you what you're doing. It will tell you what you're doing every day, except for the text messages, which, um, you know, that's a, you just got to track those still manually. You need to be following the business plan every day. Tonight, 7 p.m., we are going to have Money Mondays. We do it every Monday at Exit Strategy. So we get our full-time agents, our part-time agents together. We've got um, Linktree, which that is a marquee exclusive. Uh, she, that's the, oh, I was only trained on that by her. I've never seen anybody else do a good class on it. If you would like to join us tonight, no matter what real estate brokerage, what state you're in, does not matter. Um, if it's a technology we don't have or you don't have, I'm sure you can find it somewhere else. So all you need to do is text grow with exit strategy. That's grow with exit strategy to 85377. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen so you can just see me again. But so grow, grow with exit strategy. Yep. To, and... our, to the number 85377. Let me write that down. Because I'm going to replay this video. This yep. is another thing I love about this. So grow with exit strategy. Yep. To 853. And then the number that you're going to text that to is 85377. Okay. I'm going to make sure that I come back and add this to our recording. So guys, one thing that we've mentioned consistently is one, you got a plan. <clears throat> Two, you need to have a systematic approach to your planning. And three, you need a customer relationship management system. These are three things that can change your business. But if you don't have, and, and do I still use paper? Yes, but I have everything inside of a system. I use paper because they've shown that you're more likely to implement from paper. So there was a time that everything I did was digital. I saw a decrease in my productivity. I went back to taking the time to write things down. I saw an increase. So for me, whatever trigger that is in the brain is working for me. You have to do what works for you. Nick, give them that call to action again. So if you would like to, as a, a realtor from any brand, attend Money Mondays tonight. And actually, you can reuse that code again next week because we will be doing it again next week with a different topic. Uh, but go ahead and text uh, this number right now, you're going to text the number 85377. So that's the number you're going to message to this uh, 85377. You're going to put this word in there. Ex grow with exit strategy. Grow oh. with exit strategy. And actually, I think somewhere I've got a graphic for that that I will put up on. And there's no registration required. We're not going to try to harass you afterwards or anything like that. Um, and it will be recorded if you miss part of it. I will be putting it on my YouTube channel. Um, but my YouTube uh, has got some of the past ones. Instagram, I'll throw the graphic up there just to remind you about tonight and give you the topic for next week. I'll actually I'll give it to you here as well. It's gifting. So we're going to talk about gifting next week because I thought, all right, if I'm going to talk with Marky about business plan and my entire 22 is about relationships and really bringing the consumer back into focus, I need to start talking about what we're going to do for the consumers. So we, we're excited to um, to keep Money Mondays going. It's been a, to me, it's such a disservice to the industry that most brokerages don't have nighttime classes that are live, don't, um, you know, just don't really have a lot of stuff going on right now for the consumer either. So I feel like the COVID excuse, yeah, we're still virtual in a lot of ways. Yes, some people are getting sick, but then have some content online, do something. And yeah. that's where we are really uh, finding that the consumers are out there ready to learn and engage and to invest and create legacies for their families. And when people are saying, well, I'll start doing those events again, or I'll start speaking again after X, Y, Z, Marky, you've just been doing it the whole time, you know, just quickly um, adapted to virtual kicking and screaming. I learned how to do it too. And now I love it you know, because we can reach and engage and learn from 
you know, listen to uh, so many other people as well as share what we know. Well, I definitely love evening programs. I do a what a Tuesday night, a Thursday night, a Saturday morning, um, because realtors are generally out in the street doing things. And of course, we're doing those programs virtual. And I've been back on the road now since August, and I'll go back on the road uh, March the 1st with a packed March of this year. So guys, make sure that you text 85377. You're going to text Grow with Exit Strategy. And we would love to see you tonight in our Money Mondays. It's going to be a, a fabulous event with additional tools and resources in order to help you grow your business. I want you to make it a marvelous Monday. Thank you, Nick. Thank you very much for having me.